What is wireframing? What's the purpose of it? How do you create a wireframe? And why should you use them? These are all topics and questions we'll cover in this video. First, let's define what a wireframe is. Wireframes are skeletons to your design. There are different types of wireframes and they range from simple loose sketches to low and high fidelity mockups. The difference between these is how much detail is put into them. So why are wireframes important and why should you be using them in your design process if you aren't already? The key reason for using wireframes is to give you a starting point for your design. Depending on whether you're designing for a website, an app, or emails, you can benefit from adding wireframes to your design process. When you're creating wireframes, there's no right or wrong way to do it. The way that I approach wireframing is I just start drawing with rectangles, lines, and using variations of gray to indicate different things. For example, light gray boxes with an X drawn in the middle of them could stand for photos. Smaller rectangular boxes stand for blocks of copy. Depending on if you're new or you've created many wireframes before, I highly recommend that you create a wireframe kit. This way you're using reusable components instead of redrawing these elements every time you need them. If you're curious about how I've created a wireframe kit, I'll leave a link to a video below where you can check that out. Another option is you can purchase wireframe kits. So if you're interested in having a wireframe kit that already has all of these elements included, then check out the one that I've created. I'll leave a link to it down below. It's a wireframe kit specifically built in Adobe XD. But if you just wanted to create a simple wireframe on your own, all you would need to do is open up your preferred design software and just start using the simple tools like rectangles and lines and start creating your layout. If you're working on a really complex project, then you might even want to start by sketching your wireframes first and then moving on to create higher fidelity mockups in a design software. So why is wireframing important in the design process? Well, depending on if you're an in-house designer for a company, wireframes can help you get buy-in from stakeholders. This helps make sure that everyone is aligned on the overall goal, flow, and structure of a design before you waste time designing it. Now that you know what a wireframe is, how to create a basic one, and why it's important in the design process, I'm going to walk you through a project I created a couple years ago when I was a designer at Blue Bottle Coffee and show you how important wireframing was for the entire process. So diving into this Adobe XD file, this was a self-initiated project I worked on. I saw how disorganized and inefficient the process was for designing emails, so I decided to rethink how we could do this. And I approached this in a few different ways. One, I proposed that we use a new program, Adobe XD, because it's more of a screen design software, whereas some of the previous designers were still using Photoshop and it made it really difficult to create lots of versions when we were designing these emails for our marketing partners. The second part of the project is I created a toolkit within Adobe XD, adding reusable components, adding our color palette, our character styles for the typography, adding reusable components, for the wireframes and templates that I created. Basically, the point of having this toolkit file is that any new designer could come in and start designing emails with the Blue Bottle design brand in mind. So let's dive into this template toolkit. Starting with this first board here, titled Design Toolkit Guidelines, are just some notes for a designer to keep in mind when they're designing emails. The dimensions for the logo header, our core color palette, typography, how we treat the CTAs with examples, how we treat the secondary CTAs with examples, and also the footer. As we scroll over to the right, you'll see different templates for emails. Now, a lot of work went into the process before creating these templates. Essentially, these are wireframes, 
And what's great is you can drag and drop photos directly into these components and actually use them as a design starting point. But this is meant to give you an idea of all the different ways that we could approach email at Blue Bottle. So in this template, you'll notice that, which by the way, these light gray boxes stand for a photo. This one is very photo focused, so it's really leaning on the photography to tell the story in this email. Whereas in email to template, you'll notice that we start with a headline, lead into a photo, and then continue with a body copy and a CTA. For the third email template, it's kind of starting to add other components. So we're still focusing on a very photo forward hero, but then we're also adding in this two column grid with an opportunity to show photos of more products and click through to buy. And also notice that there's two different ways I thought about treating the header. This header over here for email template three is pretty standard. It's basically a small logo on a white bar. But because Blue Bottle Coffee's brand guidelines and design aesthetic is very minimal, a lot of the photography had white backgrounds. So it made it easy to be able to add the logo on top of the photo, like in this example. Again, these are just different ways of approaching email, different templates, different ways to organize the information. You'll notice a lot of reusable components, like this image is the same size as this image over here. This secondary grid section matches the one that's over here, but they're all just different ways of how you can organize the information. Going over here, I consider these ones a little bit more experimental, and so I called these ones editorial one, two, three, and so forth. Over here, you'll notice that the images are taking up a little bit more space. We're experimenting with overlapping type. One thing to note about the way that Blue Bottle executed their emails is they mostly used image slices. So we don't really need to worry about the technical constraints of overlapping type and live text. While it is always a best practice to use live text and adding images, Blue Bottle was just too small of a company. They didn't have a dedicated engineering team to work on this. So aside from the designer creating the email, we had a production designer that would create image slices and then the marketing stakeholder would be uploading these image slices into the email program. Moving over to editorial two, again, you'll notice some more of these overlapping elements. We wanted some of these emails to have an editorial look to them. It's kind of like a magazine, it's something that's really beautiful and pleasing to the eye. Here for the fourth editorial template, you'll notice it's another very image forward template. So for the header, we have an image, with a headline and a CTA, and then it's just followed by more images. So depending on what the intention is for this email, maybe it's a new product launch, and we have a lot of beautiful photography of that product, then this might be something that we would wanna use for that email. Then to simplify things, I created these two short form announcement type templates. So this is like, maybe we're announcing an event. Um, a lot of times we would be launching new cafes. So maybe this was like, hey, check out the new cafe in you know, New York City or wherever. Or maybe it's a coming soon email of like letting you know that we're releasing a new coffee or a new product. So these are meant to be very short messages and to the point. Another type of template I worked on were collections. So this was meant to be kind of like a roundup of things. So let's say this is like a holiday email where we wanted to show kind of like a gift guide and maybe maybe this first section is brewing equipment, the second is some specific coffee, and the third might be something that you would use to drink your coffee out of. And these are just different ways to approach it. You'll notice that collection one focuses on more vertical photos while collection two has a square image layout but they're very similar. And then going on to collection three and four, the difference is that we have a more prominent photo for the hero, and then it follows with the grid. And continuing with the fourth, fifth, and the sixth, these are just, again, different ways of organizing information, but the intention behind this template is the same. It's like a collection of products, or it could even be a roundup post of recent blog articles. 
Social One is a more unique template I created. So often Blue Bottle would have their audience posting photos using specific hashtags. And so maybe like once a month, once a quarter, we would send out one of these types of emails where we would put together this grid of photos of people that use that hashtag on Instagram and encourage people to check out the hashtag and see other photos of how other people were enjoying their Blue Bottle coffee at home or at a cafe. So we would feature different photos from Instagram, encourage people to use the hashtag or just check out what everyone else is posting. But moving up here are the individual components. So while these may be the recommended templates, realize that this is a modular system and we could easily swap things out. For example, on this template, we have this header, but we could very easily swap out and do any one of these other hero images. The same thing with the grid. And this is kind of how you could start to plug and play with all the different options. Like maybe you wanted a simple image as the hero and you wanna pair it with this square two by two grid. You could do that easily. Over here are footers. Think of these as kind of like a banner ad that would be at the bottom of the email, kind of like a PS. These are the wire frames that I worked on. So we had a left aligned, a center aligned, and a right aligned, and then one that was mostly text-based. And then if you look over here, this is where you can see examples of those footers in practice. So over here with the left aligned, you can see how the image had to be photoshopped to allow for more negative space on the left where the text would lie. Here's an example where the photo's on the left and the text is on the right, and then a few examples of text only. Occasionally we wanted to mention our Instagram. So in this example, we're showing the blue bottle handle and encouraging people to share their mornings with us by using hashtag blue bottle at home. On top is the wireframe and then below is an example. Another version for a footer is linking out to a blog post. So again, starting with the wireframe here and then going down here to an example, pulling a photo from the blog post, the intention is that you would click here and it would go to this brew guide. Another variation of that blog post footer is basically just to stack more of them on top. So the difference here is that we have a header. This was the logo that they used for the blog, the Blue Bottle Coffee Lab, and then links to three different blog posts. This is the wireframe version, and then this is the example put into practice. Those are the templates and the components, but if you look at how I built this file, You'll notice over here in the document assets, I added the colors. So the main blue bottle color palette are this blue, dark gray, light gray, and white. These are all the different character styles. So you could easily add a text box and swap between the different character styles of whether it being a header, H1 header, an H2 header, and if it's a link and so forth. And then, you'll notice that I have these different components. And the great thing about components is you can actually drag and drop them. If you wanted to add a CTA, you could literally just drag and drop the CTA. And once you zoom in, you can see that it's already been designed and styled and all you would have to do is double click and change to whatever you want it to say, shop now, for example. Same thing with the logo header, you could drag and drop and then this is the exact width that it should be for an email. You don't have to worry about changing the size of the logo or anything. So I hope that helped to give you a little bit more of an insight into how a designer actually uses wireframing and puts it into practice with actual design. I've created a lot of videos on how to wireframe. So if this is a topic that you're interested in, then I encourage you to check out one of these videos next on screen or link down in the description below. <music>